Um, so in what you're going to find all the information for this content in the appendix, the appendix will look slightly different on your side. You're not going to have these numbers. there will be letters. Um, I'm working from the development branch, but again, it, you'll be, you'll be seeing the same information. Um, but essentially what our shiny is, is just another library. So, um, you have to install dot packages and bring in shiny. And I really recommend taking maybe an afternoon um, on a weekend or a couple afternoons um, to go through these beginner uh, lessons on Shiny. Um, this is super, super helpful. And because um, I think, yeah, there's there's many, so the way that R uh, or folks are making money from R is like, you know, developing out different consulting businesses, that sort of thing. There's a lot of folks who, um, I, how do I say this? They're learning materials for some of um, the R um, programming um, aspects are phenomenal as a result because the funds are going into that end versus um, versus other things. But here, um, it's a pretty there's it's a pretty straightforward um, introductory lesson, and um, I'll be going through some highlights here. But I definitely recommend you guys um, going through these um, lessons on your own on your own time. So let's say that you guys have done that, or maybe you want to just dive in even before that. Um, with Shiny, you basically have three specific parts, um, and all everything can be included in a single script. So the single script in this case would be app.r. Um, you can rename it, but traditionally it's just called app.r. Um, it's going to have three components, a user interface, a server, and then the call to the Shiny application. So it essentially looks like this. I'm going to just copy this. Um, and here I have my, I'm going to close this over here. Um, so in my code folder, I have a code folder on my computer where I um, keep different coding projects. Um, I'm going to NYC uh, Shiny app. And uh, I'm going to set my working directory right here. So in this application, I've already preloaded the data that I want to pull in, but I'm not even going to think about the data just yet. Um, for now, I am bringing in my library, Shiny. This is another library um, called Bootstrap Library that is going to bring slightly more modern ways of styling what we have in our application. So instead of just kind of a crummy default, it's going to make the text a little bit fresher, more interesting, and, and brings in a couple other pieces. So, um, and this actually comes from the, the one of the most recent Shiny Off tutorials. So you'll see that there as well. But in the user interface, um, the user interface is basically going to be telling us what we see when we open up the app. And it will also gather information from the user. So maybe we want to ask the user, pick a variable from this drop down um, menu. The user will pick a variable and um, the server will then trigger some action once they make that selection. So with this app, we're splitting up the user interface and the server, um, but in R Shiny, it's all connected and can be all connected within a single script. More complex um, R Shiny options will also, um, will have a whole separate script for UI, a whole separate script for a server, you know, many more, but in our case, we can start really simple. So we have just these three things. Um, let's just add a little bit of information. We're going to start to update our user interface a little bit. Um, so here, I'm going to just add, um, instead of just having this page sidebar, I'm going to add, um, well, actually here, even before that, just so that you guys believe me that this will work, if I run app right now, it's going to give me something that's empty. <laughs> it gives me this sidebar, which is um, a functionality of the bootstrap library that it's making it a little bit, you know, nicer for us to work with, but there's nothing in there. Um, let me replace that with a title. I want to call this the NYC SDOH app temporarily. And then in my sidebar, I'm going to have um, a text that says sidebar. And outside of the sidebar, I'm going to have some text that says main content contents. Okay. So let's run our app. And all right, we have 
a website title, we have a sidebar, we have main contact. So this is the beginnings of a user interface structure. Okay. So now let's say we want to actually add a drop down menu. We're not going to even link the data yet, but we just want to see if it can work. Um, try to do this on your own after you've taken the those user um, those mini tutorials. But in this case, I'm just going to copy and paste um, the information. And, and again, some folks can't wait. So if you can't wait, <laughs> we can do that right here. So what's happening here? Here we have a function called help text, which is going to give us in kind of slightly smaller um, font uh, directions. So select different variables from the drop down menu to explore the data. That's your instruction. This is where the magic is. We're bringing in this user interface um, option called select input. And basically, whatever is selected, the R Shiny application is going to call that variable color because we're going to be using different um, racial ethnic groups later on to visualize. So here, um, it's just called color. <laughs> um, we're going to, so that's what the user interface is going to or pass on to the server. But what the user sees is this specific name of the variable, self-identified race and ethnicity. And the choices here will be percent black, percent Hispanic, percent white. And this is what the variable, the data that we're going to bring in later on. Um, the data, the variable name of the data is this. So, you know, this is not usually what um, variable names look like in data sets it's gonna look like this. So here we're creating a, a switch basically. If a user selects this, the server knows it's going to be looking for this specific variable and so on and so forth. So these are what the choices are in this example. And then the selected one is gonna to default to this. So I'm gonna just save this and run the app. And we can see that here, we have a fully functioning user interface now. We have our helper text. We have the name of the variable. If I click on this, um, I can choose something else, okay? Of course, I can't see that the server now knows, okay, there is going to be, um, when I select this, the variable name is something else, but you get the idea. And here, you know, you can also try, when you're working with this sort of stuff, just test out different options. So if I just did that, what would that look like? I can see here that it's already changed accordingly, okay? All right, so we've got that. And now, um, again, uh, you should have something that looks like this. And you can try many, many different layouts. There's so many other types of widgets. So instead of a drop down, you can do a slider. Um, you can have uh, selections. There's, there's, you know, radio, radio buttons are called. There are many, many different options. Um, we're just kind of hitting the start here. So now let's bring in the server. Um, the server is going to be down here and we've got a lot of information happening. So I'm gonna actually just copy this and paste it because we're moving forward in time. Um, what is happening here now? So we still have the Shiny app. Um, in this case, I, well, let's see here. Yeah, okay, I think I can actually, I might've taken out my library. So let's just put that back in here. Um, we've got all this information. Now, before we even start our user interface, we're gonna load in some data. So I'm reading this data in from past experience when I was, you know, um, and, and uh, Yilin, uh, you, a phenomenal PhD student in our group was also helping with this. Um, basically there was a couple, we had to uh, do a little bit of data refinement so in this case, we're just um, like styling the, or, or not styling it, we're updating the data a little bit, um, changing the coordinate reference system, because we'll need that for later on. Got it. Here, um, we're also going to add to our map panel, a map. And in this case, um, we're using this in a main panel. We're adding a map and we're gonna be using Leaflet for our map. For whatever reason, Leaflet is a, a mapping um, interface or a mapping library that seems to perform a bit better um, in our shiny apps than Tmap. You can still use Tmap because that's what we tried out earlier, but I actually recommend Leaflet because it just renders a bit more quickly. 
And here we have our server and we've added a lot of stuff in there. So now when this is loaded, um, the UI is specifying a specific variable from our data set. And it basically is just telling us to make a map with it. So this map down here that connects right here, this is the code that we're pulling from uh, Leaflet. And you don't know how to do this off the top of your head. You take an existing example, you find resources online, copy, paste, swap it out with your own data. So in this case, we had to do a little bit more data wrangling to get the data to be working using you know, other tips and tricks found online. Um, here, we're adding a color um, palette that will be purple, blue to green. And this is where the magic is happening of the actual leaflet um, mapping call. So um, here we're adding a base map of um, Cardo DB Positron, which is similar to what we saw in the map box example. We're adding some polygons, um, styling it, adding a, a pop-up, all that good stuff. So here, if I run the entire app, you can now see that um, this map is linked to this data. And if I give it a different, if I give the server a different variable, right? So if I flip to Hispanic, that should trigger a different variable. The server responds with an updated map and, and so on and so forth, okay? So this is like a very super, super quick intro, but what this can actually get into. And so the rest of this, um, the, the module like on your own time um, we can expand this prototype massively. And this is where lots of tinkering in updates on your own will be possible. But the really great part of flipping over to coding is that the sky is their limit. You can customize to your heart's content. So this is a version that is quite a bit bigger. Here, we um, are switching out um, the Bootstrap library for style to a new library called Shiny Themes, where we actually specify a very specific um, guide down here, the Shiny Theme uh, Yeti. So this makes our map really interesting, or like the, 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 the coloring and the styles look a lot more interesting. We're also adding, um, here, I'll just run the app so you can see what this will look like. So you start small, you start with just what we started with before, then you can start to maybe update the color. Maybe then you start to figure out a way of how to add a legend, right? Add legend, you might Google add legend, leaflet, or shiny, right? You might include um, additional variables from your data set. Um, and then you can also in the panel start to add some more information before it or below it um, using the different resources you can find on how to you know, expand your, your user interface further. Um, here, it's also um, adding additional information. So it's, let's say I see this area, Ocean Hill, I'm gonna scroll down here to Ocean Hill and see the corresponding um, uh, histogram for that specific area, right? So maybe you start and just really go all out with one specific, um, you know, tab, but then in the user interface research you've been doing, you find, oh, I can also create multiple tabs in an RShiny app. So here, different um, tab, this was generated essentially by just copying and pasting the information from this one. And then in this new tab, now we're switching out the user input. So instead of looking at a specific self-identified race and ethnicity, we're looking at demographic or socioeconomic variables like poverty, income, and so on and so forth. So that obviously has to be updated. Here, you're probably also wondering what this is. It is in Latin. <laughs> this is called lorem ipsum. It's also linked into, um, in our module. So lorem ipsum um, is basically Latin text that you can generate um, just to do fill-ins. So here, we've added a little bit of information to kind of contextualize what you're seeing here. But in this example, we didn't have time to do that yet, or maybe we're not sure what will go there. So we just add some filler text. Um, and in the about section here, there's not really any um, server functions that have to happen. It's just text. And so we're using a lot more filler text as well, just to kind of um, start to get an idea of what things will look like. 
And then finally here, I'll highlight this map. So here we're looking at a different um, variable. So we're looking at actual maternal morbidity um, health outcomes. Um, so here we're not selecting a specific neighborhood, but instead we're pulling in another library, um, well, the library that is visualizing the things down here are actually, uh, is actually a library called Plotly, formerly known as D3. Um, so here in this case, and this took a bit of, you know, refinement, this is where all those hours will come later. Um, in the server function, um, you can see that information as well. So I think the server for that is right here the health demographic scatter plot. So here we're using a function called render plotly to, um, to create a scatter plot of those two things. Leaflet um, is a, uh, it's a JavaScript library and JavaScript is a language. And then within JavaScript, you know, people have written all sorts of different libraries that you can use to create different things. And Leaflet is the simplest uh, JavaScript library for making um, web maps. It's very popular. Um, <clears throat> this is the main homepage for it. It has good documentation, which I always recommend you looking at documentation once you start uh, working with code. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just going to show a couple examples here. So, um, and first I'll show the map and then I'll show the code for it. And this is, um, there you go, put in um, the chat. Um, this is the repository that if you want to go explore it a little bit, and we'll come back to that actually <clears throat> repository later. So here is a very, very simple asset map with leaflet. Um, all you're seeing here is points that are being loaded from a CSV file. Um, so you can already start thinking about this in terms of the data you have in your own content. Do you have a CSV file? Okay, this is how it could link, look in the most simple way in a leaflet map. Um, and pop-ups are fairly easy to um, uh, configure. And so here, what we're doing is showing a attribute from the, or a field in the CSV, one of the columns. Um, <clears throat> and then a slightly more complex one that's gonna add a few pieces. Um, and these are, again, the examples that we have in the repo that I think would be helpful. Um, so some of the things to point out here, um, you, I've added this, Leaflet has a nice layer switcher, um, which you can configure by adding different layers to it. Um, and so then there's this idea of base maps. Uh, I've added two different base maps. You don't need to have multiple, but um, that's just a common, a common thing you've probably seen in web maps. And then further I've added, um, we had this hospital layer before, uh, and then added this other layer of community centers. And that's from a different data source I'll show in a second. But um, the, and the final thing here, of course, is the markers are colored and then I've added icons to them. And so I kind of set these up as some pieces of an example that I think would be useful if you go the route of creating a map with leaflet. Um, Cause I think that they're kind of the things you want right away is maybe a multiple layers maybe different icons for different uh, markers and stuff like that. So all of this that we're looking at there um, is created basically with one file that loads in some data files. And so this file is called index.html. We'll talk about a bit more about that later at the end of the session too. Um, but so this is an HTML file. Time is up for five minutes for the breakout rooms. Okay, wait. I'm gonna say keep breakout room open and then just say yeah, three more things. Same. Okay, I'll just say a couple more things. It's um and so <clears throat> an HTML file, especially this one, can contain um everything we need for a leaflet map. Um we have in the top we have this head section, which loads some um external JavaScript libraries like Leaflet. For example, you can kind of see in here it's being loaded. Um, also, a couple other libraries like jQuery and this one called Papa Parse are being loaded. There's even some CSS, which is styling information within the head. Uh, it's in this style tag, and those are little rules about style. 
And then there is some actual HTML in this HTML file. It's basically just this. It's just a single item that says, here's going to be a map on the page. And then when we talked about leaflet code, we're talking about some JavaScript. And so that JavaScript is all within this script tag. So all this here, and I won't go line by line or anything, that's all that's needed to create that map, enable the zoom in and out, add some layers to it, and and um, and configure the pop-ups. Uh, and then I guess there's a little more here. Yeah, so I think that's going to be all I'll say for now. It's again, this is really short because we wanted to match the time that took for um, Catherine to do the UMAP example as well. Um, but we'll be coming back later to show you how to use this um, template repo to create your own version of this and then start doing some updates to it.